you guys, so today I wanted to walk you through my little redecoration of my background, let you know where I got everything, all that fun stuff. Who cares? Not sure. I do. So this is today's video, enjoy. So I wanted to change around my background a little bit just to add a little bit more color and stuff like that because uh, I had just a lot of plants in the background and there was too much emphasis on the plants and then everyone would notice when they were dying and that really hurt my feelings. <laughs> no, I just wanted a little bit more color um, and I wanted it to be a little bit more functional as well. This room, you guys haven't seen the whole room. It's quite a big room behind the camera and the lights and stuff like that. I have like a built-in shelving unit that has cupboards and stuff, but I can't get into the cupboards because all my lights and equipment and stuff like that is in the way. So I'd have to move all this like heavy bulky equipment to get like one thing out of the drawers kind of thing. So I wanted to get this drawer unit and that's basically how I got the whole friggin' thing rolling. I'm gonna walk you through how I start to decorate basically. Throughout my entire house, I have more of like a kind of like cozy, sort of like boho kind of style. I like a lot of texture, a lot of like wood, metals, different stuff like that. I'm not big on like the super crisp white furniture and different stuff, so even this like white thing was brought me back, brought me back to the Ikea days. So this is the three drawer wood tile dresser from West Elm. I got it on sale, which was fantastic. The reason I chose that particular piece is because I like that texture that they have from the wood tiling. I like that it's not completely white all the way through. So it just makes it look a little less clinical and harsh. And when I'm going through and like decorating different rooms, I usually like to pick one or two furniture pieces that are kind of gonna be like the anchor for the room. And then I build around that. So when I first started getting into like decorating and stuff like that, I would panic. Um, because I would look at one piece of furniture and I'd be like, I don't know what this goes with and I don't want to invest in this furniture and then get a side table and it doesn't work together. And then what if I move into a new house that has floors that look more gray and blah, blah, blah. The one thing I would say with decorating is not to like rush it. I know a lot of people like to just like get things done and I'm really like that as well. Like I like to get it done now. <laughs> I don't want to wait. But if I can go against how I operate, I would say that it's better to take your time decorating a space because you will come across different things in your travels that you might like more than if you had just kind of rushed to throw it all together. Some of my favorite pieces in my house are things that like I just came across when I wasn't looking for them. Um, and once I added it to the space, I was like, oh, this is like perfect. So to start off redecorating this, that was kind of my anchor piece. And then from there, I sort of just went around to different stores and kind of thought, what sort of things would I like to pair with this? What am I gonna do to make that look less harsh, to kind of make it a little more feminine, a little more playful kind of thing. And I like to go on Pinterest sometimes and kind of find like different little inspirations and stuff, but more so I like to just go into a store, look at all the different pieces, Pieces and then kind of go from there. A lot of the times I'll go on to Photoshop and kind of Photoshop a few different things together to see sort of what might look good, what I might want to add in. So the second thing that I picked up to redecorate this room was this kind of wall hanging thing. Um, I also got that from West Elm. It was just kind of hanging on a wall and there was no price tag on it. And I just pointed at it and I was like, can I, can I purchase this? Like, is this for sale? <laughs> First of all, I know that that's cut unevenly. What do you want me to do, man? I don't know what to say. It's just gonna drive you all nuts. And those of you that didn't notice, you're welcome now you notice and that's gonna bother you forever. But I really liked the colors in this. I originally had one up there that was just plain white and I thought it was really like pretty looking, but it just like didn't stand out enough on camera for me. I wanted something a little bit more um, kind of detailed and more colored. And this is what made pulling the room together a lot easier because I have this white drawer it's white, it's gonna go with whatever. But when I picked that guy out, you can kind of see there's like creams, there's some kind of coral colors, some pinks, some kind of blues and stuff like that. And from there, I just kind of pulled from those colors into little accents around the room. So on my desk, I have um, just a couple little vases and stuff like that. The blush pink one is from West Elm as well. I believe I got that on sale too. And then the other two vases up there uh, are both from Anthropology. I really, really, really love the decor from Anthropology. They have such cute stuff. It's like super 
unique looking. Um, it always kind of has like a little bit more of like a handmade feel to it, which for me, I really like mixing with other pieces. West Elm and CB2 and even a lot of stuff from Wayfair oftentimes looks like very manufactured, which is really pretty. And I like mixing it with anthropology stuff so that it looks a little bit more kind of like cozy and boho and just a little bit more unique than just putting together like a bunch of perfect looking vases, if you know what I mean. So I usually end up ordering first from like the CB2s, Wayfair, West Elm, different stuff like that, getting the stuff that looks more manufactured first and then going to anthropology afterwards and being like, okay, how can I make this a little bit more cute? Kind of add in some little touches. I liked adding that little kind of amber apothecary jar with that blush um, vase just because it has a little bit of that translucency to it. It has some kind of texture because there's ridges on the glass. Same thing over here. I like that wicker banding around that vase just because it adds a little bit more texture in as well. And I think that's so important in this space, especially because we're dealing with so much white behind me. Um, if I had just added like a plain white vase in there, it would kind of get lost in the background. This print is one of the prints that I had originally hanging up here, kind of in the background. So I got that print from a local kind of boutique store. It's called 1910. It's on uh, Main Street if you're in Vancouver or you're ever visiting. A lot of people have been asking me for the name of the artist and I'm I'm not sure, unfortunately. It doesn't say their name anywhere on the print um, and they've taken those prints, like they're out of the store already because I bought them quite a while ago, like when I had first kind of set up this room. It was a while ago. But 1910 often has like really, really cute kind of prints in there. A lot of the times they're local artists, which is really cool. Just a great little boutique shop in general. They have a lot of like locally made candles and stuff like that. If you guys remember from my last beauty room tour, I got my chair from there. And I also got sort of like these cement brush holders. I'll show you. These guys, I got these from 1910 as well last year and I put them on my wood desk and I really love kind of like the texture of that with the wood and stuff like that. It made a really nice contrast. So I kept one of those prints, the one that I felt kind of like worked the best and was like the most colorful. Um, I kept one of those prints down here and just took the glass out of the frame so that it wouldn't have that glare anymore. And then I took the rest of those prints and just kind of like dispersed them around my house. All of the books, so the books that I have on the um, desk and then up on this shelf as well, I got from Powell Books in Portland for like dirt cheap. If you are buying books for decor reasons, First of all, I love, I love decor books. Like I think they just look so beautiful and they really like add to a space a lot, but it can feel really crazy going and buying books like that because oftentimes like huge kind of like hardcover, um, large print books like that are exorbitantly priced, but it feels crazy to go buy a book that you're probably not going to read to just like set atop your coffee table. So if you are looking for decor books, I really, really recommend going to um, a store that has used books because a lot of times they have all of those kind of like Chanel, Vogue, like those really cool coffee table books, but they're like significantly cheaper. So I got, I think I ended up picking up like eight books because I wasn't sure what I was going to use in the background kind of thing. I think I got eight books and they're all like massive like printed photographs and stuff like that books. And I think I spent like $113 or something like that on it, which normally like I have some decor books that one book costs like $130, you know what I mean? These mirrors, I've had them forever. Um, a lot of people have asked me about where I got those from as well. They're from Anthropology. I got them years ago. I don't think you'll be able to find them online, but I have gone into some anthropology stores that still have those mirrors. They're great, they're super cute. I love adding them into little spaces. I used to have them in my living room in my old apartment. This little shelf I got for like dirt cheap at Winners. <laughs> okay, first of all, listen, in Canada, we simply aren't blessed with the amount of home stores you guys are blessed with in America. And as especially not anything like affordable. We don't have Target home decor, okay? I mean, I go to Target and I collect all the home decor and I come back, but we don't have that shit in Canada. So places like Winners are usually the last place I kind of pop into if I'm just trying to find something small sort of thing. They had two shelves. <laughs> Um, because I was searching everywhere for a friggin' shelf. It shouldn't be that hard to find, but for some reason it was. So they had this one singular shelf at Winners. It's a little bit busted up in a couple areas, uh, but I don't care. It's, it's perfect. It does the trick. I was hoping to get a shelf that would be a little bit longer kind of thing so I could sort of move this stuff over here so that this wasn't blank space, um, but Listen, I did what I could with the amount of time allotted. I removed this shelf and put it up again. 
I don't even know how many times. We just had to keep unscrewing it and moving it back up and down because I kept looking at it in the frame and I was like, fuck man, like that's like way too high. But then this thing was way too tall as well. So I couldn't bring it that much lower. It was the whole freaking debacle. There's a million holes in my wall from first of all, taking those freaking paintings down and secondly, moving that shelf around so many times, but I'm fine with it. It's not going to be like perfectly in the frame, whatever. It looks good in the actual space. Sometimes not everything is for YouTube, you know? So on my shelf, I have those little books as well, which were from Powell Books, as I mentioned. Um, and then I just popped uh, a little ivy up there, which I'm hoping will kind of grow down and then we'll add a little bit more greenery to this side. Ivies are super simple, super easy. Um, they usually grow really, really great, even if you don't have a ton of light in this space, which this room is actually quite dark. It might look really bright, but I have a fuck ton of lights around me. But this room is definitely not the brightest room in the world so I have to kind of opt for plants that are a little bit more hardy um, so ivies usually work really really great in spaces like that you can't see it but there's another one up here which I'll show you guys from a different angle that little guy in the teal pot is a dracaena dracaenas are fantastic like I have them all over my house because they're so hardy you don't need to water them a ton a lot of them can withstand being in like darker spaces as well that little pot I got from the garden center that I grabbed that plant from and then the ivy is in a little pink pot which I got from anthropology as well over here I have this little dried bouquet I love that bouquet so much. I like mixing in dried flowers because I think it just looks really, really beautiful, adds that kind of texture in, but also because you're not having to change them out like you would with fresh flowers. You can totally dry flowers yourself so easily for like so cheap because buying dried flowers can be really, really expensive for no reason. <laughs> but a lot of the times if I get sent a bouquet or I pick one up just to like have around, I will take different little pieces out and dry them myself to kind of pop into different things. So for instance, I have like this little guy that I just kind of, I took out of a bouquet that I had and popped it in a little little vase. Dried eucalyptus I really love as well. Um, you can usually get like bunches of eucalyptus at uh, garden centers and then you can just kind of hang them upside down and they'll dry really, really beautifully. That particular bouquet I got from a local store out in Fort Langley. I think it's called Bella and Wren. The bouquet was made by um, some local girls as well. Uh, they're called Bloom Assembly. They're out in New West, I believe. Beautiful, just like such gorgeous arrangements. They were kind of expensive. I think they were like about $35 per bouquet. Um, and I ended up picking up two of them, but I can, I can reason with that because I know I'm gonna have it forever. You know? So I got that one, which is kind of like white and cream with a little bit of that green from the eucalyptus in there. And then I also got this other one, which I'm just gonna show you because I wanna give it honorable mention. Um, this one was all white. So I kind of, I, I picked up both because I wasn't sure which one I was gonna like more in the background. And I figured I would just kind of put this somewhere else anyways, because it's so beautiful. Um, and this, uh, vase I got from Zara Home. Then over here, I still have my, my good old trusty plant sidekicks. So I used to have a snake plant in the background, which I moved out uh, to a different part of the room, but now I have my Dracaena, which is the tall guy here. So this is a different variety of the same little one that's up here. And that guy I water never never <laughs> I think I can count on like one hand how many times I've watered that and I've been living here for almost two years so let's just put it that way then on the floor you can't really see him um, in a lot of the shots but if you guys ever do I believe that's a Chinese evergreen I'm not a hundred percent that one is done quite well as well it doesn't look awesome but it it does the best that it can okay and that guy's really really similar to a peace lily in that when it uh is needing water all the leaves fall and drop and you just kind of water it and they perk back up and everything's fine and good and then this big guy right here is a peace lily so peace lilies are another one of my favorite um plants to have because they're really good in low light they're really really easy to take care of peace lilies like i just said literally like all the leaves drop. They look like <laughs> you will walk into the room one day and be like, oh God, what did I do? And then uh, you water it and it just fucking comes right back to life. And it's like, no problem, baby, I'm here for you. Uh, and this one's blooming right now, so extra special. By the way, I counted how many plants <laughs> I have because it was just gone. Um, 
for a wedding in Mexico and <laughs> my friend Alyssa, she was like, do you want me to water the plants? Cause she sent me a picture of the one piece lily that was like literally like dead on my fucking desk. And she was like, do you want me to water your plants? And I was like, oh sure. Like I'll FaceTime you and we can just go around and I'll tell you like which plants need water. We got into the first room and I was like, oh God, <laughs> I have a lot of plants. Turns out I have 40 indoor plants. And let me just say, I have a reputation here online for being a plant murderer. Listen, there's only five plants in frame. I have 35 other plants that are doing just fine. Another quick thing about plants, um, if you ever notice that like your plants aren't doing well, just try shifting them around the room. Some plants really don't like being near like drafty places, air conditioning, different stuff like that. Some plants do better when they're out of bright light. Some plants need to be closer to bright light. So if you're new to plants and you're wanting to add some to your space, because honestly, plants make all the difference in the world. Like if I was to take all the plants out of this background, fuck that shit. Like, a space is not complete to me until there is life in it. It makes such a huge difference, honestly. Like, even if you have a really, really simple place, you can't afford to, like, pick up a ton of furniture or anything like that or, like, decor or whatever, adding, like, one plant in there makes such a huge difference and it just feels, like, so much more homey and cozy and, you know, it gives you something to look after. <laughs> A companion. But if you are new to plants, definitely, um, if you feel like one is like not doing well, don't panic, move it around a little bit, see where it might like the light a little bit more. So that's how I kind of threw this room all together. When it comes to decorating, a couple things that I feel are really, really important. Texture. You will have heard me mention that so many times throughout this video. And texture doesn't always have to mean color either. Like you can still, if you want to keep it super minimal color because that's kind of your vibe, you can still get things kind of like, I like to have little pillows like this. So it's all white, super plain, super basic, but it has that nice kind of like ruffling and texture to it. So it just stands out a little bit more in the space and kind of makes it come together a little bit more. The next thing for me that I really like to add in is just some natural kind of elements. So even having something just like so simple like that little uh, wicker on that vase. The plants, of course, I like to kind of have um, usually more like natural wood rather than like the painted white wood like that. It doesn't feel like you're walking through an Ikea when you come to your house. I think a lot of people are kind of scared to add in like woods and stuff like that because they feel like it's not gonna work with other colors of wood or it's gonna look like really old school. Don't be afraid, man. It's a good thing, wood's a good thing. I also really do love adding in like the fabrics and stuff like that, so jute rugs, chef's kiss, love it, so beautiful. I showed you guys in my bedroom tour, um, we have like a big kind of jute rug underneath one corner of the bed. It's, it's like one of my favorite things in the house because it just adds like such nice textures, such nice contrast. And last but not least, I would definitely say um, I like throwing a little bit of color into the room as well. This is something that I think people shy away from. I think we all, like when we first move out, when we first get like, you know, a couch and whatever, and we start decorating, I think a lot of us gravitate towards the like gray couch everything else is white. <laughs> it is really scary to think about kind of adding color into a space, especially if you don't feel like you have a really good grasp on what might work well together and stuff. It becomes a lot easier if you pick out one thing with color that you like and then kind of tying in things from there. So you can see from this guy here, we have kind of those pinks and those blues like I mentioned. So then things like that kind of teal vase tie in a little bit easier, the blush vase, the amber, um, all the kind of colors in this photograph, everything ties together a little bit easier because we have this one piece as kind of like an anchor point to pull in all those other colors. When you put it all together, it does kind of end up tying in. I mean, I feel, I don't know. I'm not an interior decorator. <laughs> Obviously take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. It's just something I kind of enjoy doing and I've gotten more and more into as of late. I hope you guys found this interesting. If not, it's just one video out of our lives, you know? Everything that I can link, if it's still available, I'll link down below. Um, and other than that, thanks so much for hanging out and watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. When we had that feeling The stars were our ceiling Past the edge of town Cause we had nothing else to do Dreaming in full color Loving like no other No wasted days when I was wasting them with you I was wasting them when you were showing me, showing me, showing me Fake love that I couldn't see, couldn't see was true Left me with these memories, memories, memories Now I'm missing somebody I knew And I 
I knew, and I know it wasn't you. 